Hello, my front end friends. Lists are one of the most common elements that we use when we're creating websites from just making simple bullet lists or numbered lists on, we use them for navigations too, and a whole bunch of other stuff in between. So in this video, I'm going to look at the two most common types of lists. So I will address the other ones that you can have as well. Uh, but we're going to look at the two most common ones, what we should use them for, and also how we can style them from doing simple styling, like adding some spacing to them, changing the colors of things, to customizing the lists a little bit, changing the color of the icons, or even changing the icons completely to our own custom images and other stuff along the way as well. So let's jump on over to here. I'm using VS Code right now. Um, we're gonna jump through and look at a few different examples as we go through this. And as I said, the main ones we're going to be looking at are ordered lists and unordered lists. We do also have description lists. Uh, they're really a bit of a niche topic and they're kind of different from these. You won't see them used very often at all. So I'm not gonna talk about them in this video. I'll probably make a new video in the future that just focuses on those. We do have the menu as well, which I almost never actually see, and it's basically an unordered list anyway. So uh, that, again, might get its own video in the future, but ordered lists and unordered lists are what you're gonna see almost everywhere all the time and are the most important ones to know. And just before we dive into the details on them, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you're pretty new to HTML and CSS. So just really quickly, if you're new to my channel, my name is Kevin and here at my channel, I help people fall in love with CSS most of the time. But of course I do talk about HTML as well. And I'm now dedicating every Tuesday video to beginner friendly content like we're seeing right here. So let's dive right into it with my ordered lists. And we're gonna look at this this really fast we have an ol for ordered list and makes it nice and easy to remember it's a lot shorter than writing ordered lists we just need the first letter from both words and that's all we really need there uh, and for an unordered list you might have guessed it we have a ul and for these though there is an important thing is we have one third element that we have to use but it's the same for both types of lists and let's come inside of here and what that is is an li which is short for list item and it's really important that we do list items because if we didn't, and let's just say I came here and I said, you know, item one, item two, item three, and hit save on that. And I have this opened in a browser on the side. So let's pull that into view and we can see that I have item one, item two, item three, just all going one next to each other. And that's because these are just strings of text and the browser sees this, I have a list and I have a bunch of text in there. It doesn't know what to do with it, so it just throws it in there. It ignores line breaks. HTML doesn't care at all about line breaks. So we need to define these as three different things. And to be able to do that, we can come here and say they're list items. And just a really quick tip here, actually, if you're writing HTML um, and you want to be able to move stuff around, you forgot your list items and you need to move it in, I can select the text and I can click and drag to where I want it to go and then let go. So it just makes it a little bit easier to move stuff around sometimes. Uh, so we can do that here too, li, and then I could also just select this closing li, move it over, and then we'll just copy that, paste it there, and do the same thing. Hit save, and now we get my three items coming in, and we have the number one, number two, and number three, because this is an ordered list. And then let's copy this over, bring it down here, so we have two ordered lists, and then I'm gonna take this and turn it into a UL, so an unordered list. But if ever you do something like this with copying and pasting, don't forget to change the other one as well. Uh, so we are, our closing tag is matching our opening tag. And let's hit save, and we can see that this is updated to have three bullet points right there. Just really quickly though, I'm hitting save here and the updates are happening here. If you're wondering how that's working, I'm using a VS Code extension called Live Server. I'll link to that in the description. Uh, just because this is a lifesaver. If, if you're making changes here and then refreshing, and you, you know, it's a little bit annoying. So hit save here, it refreshes the page for you. It's fantastic. Um, so yeah, that'd be linked in the description. Now I have my OLs here, my ULs here, and we can see that we have a numbered list and a bullet list. And the first thing that I want to mention now is this, that this, this is like the most important part of it, is these numbers here and these bullets here, these are just visual representations, but it doesn't mean that there's not actually meaning to you using an ordered list or an unordered list. These are semantic elements, meaning they actually do carry meaning and they just happen to have default styling that looks you know, the way you'd expect those things to look. But you could have somebody who's using an assistive technology like a screen reader that actually reads the website to them, or you get bots that from like Google and other search engines and other places that will be reading your website and they don't have any visuals to look at, they're just looking at the code. And so using the correct element in the correct place is really important because as we're gonna see, we can change the style and we can completely change what the lists actually look like 
but just because we can change what they visually look like doesn't mean that we shouldn't be using the right list for the right job. And to help illustrate what the right list is for the right job, I'm gonna jump over to this example right here. Um, we won't worry too much about the HTML, but I think recipes are like the easiest way to sort of hammer home this idea of when we should use an OL or a UL. And so here's the instructions on how to make hamburgers. And then all the way down at the end here, we have an ingredient list. And so both of these, the, you know, these first three sections here are using ordered lists because we can see the numbers that are there. But what an ordered list really means is these are things that really need to be in this specific order. If we look at how to cook the burger, we're starting with preheating, we're going down to actually cooking them and then are, you know, putting them in the pan, pushing them down. And then this third step is, you know, cook them for as long as you need to cook them. Basically, it's not the best cooking instructions in the world, but, um, the idea here is like you wouldn't do this one first and then this one second and this one third uh, or whatever. You wouldn't change the order of any of these steps or same thing with these. These The order here is very important. It's a step-by-step -step guide. So we have to finish number one before we go to number two. Whereas if I go down to my ingredient list here, I used an unordered list for these because the order of them really doesn't matter. If I go grocery shopping and I have this list and I see eggs first, I can buy the eggs and then I can get my red onion and then I can get my cream crackers. The order has no importance on this list. It's just, here's all the stuff that you will need, get it all, and then we're gonna use them in a specific order when we start going through the instructions that we have here. So if something needs to be done in a specific order or the steps or something like that, then we're using an ordered list Anytime it's just, here's some stuff <laughs> that you need. Uh, it could be a list of links. It could be a list of basically anything. Most of the time I find we're using unordered lists. Uh, then, you know, we use our unordered list, our UL, and we're good to go. But of course, both of them look kind of boring. So let's get to styling them. And I think it'd be easier to style them with this basic example, just because we don't have as much to worry about on the page and we can really understand how they work. And to do that, I am going to be using an external style sheet. So I have a link here to my CSS file. And if you're new, you might not have used an external style sheet yet. Uh, you should easily still be able to follow along. This would be exactly the same as having a, a style here at the top and having my CSS in there. And if up until now you've only ever used style tags on an element to style it, I still think you'll be able to follow along pretty well, though I will put a link in the description to a video that explains how external style sheets do work in more detail. Uh, but yeah, if you've used the style up here, nothing will be new, so don't worry about it too much. It just lets us focus a little bit on, you know, here's our styles. We don't have any other clutter on the screen at once. Uh, and the first thing we're gonna do is let's select my list, because CSS is all about selecting things and then doing something with those. So we can select my unordered list, and I'm gonna open and close some curly braces, and then we're gonna style something here. And if this is, if you've only been doing style is equal to, the parts inside these quotations are exactly what I'm gonna be putting right here. Um, and I would really, if you're still using inline CSS, I'd really recommend learning about external style sheets just because that is the standard. It's how you're gonna be working going forward. So there's no better time than now. And on this OL, I'm gonna put a border and let's go with like five pixels so we can see it. Uh, solid and we're gonna do an orange red so it stands out a little bit uh, and then let's come down and also select my UL so I'm selecting my unordered list open and close my curly braces and I'm gonna do a border on this one we'll do five pixels solid and for this one to coral it's a little bit different but we see it maybe corals too similar actually uh, let's try lime green which will also stand out and <laughs> there we go and there's a few important things that I want to highlight. And the reason I'm putting borders on these at all is that we have these block level elements. So we have a, a list here, it's one big block. And then I have another big block under here. And that's my two elements stacking one on top of each other. Next up, I can also come in and select the list items themselves. So right now I have a box around all of this. I have a box around all of that. This is my orange one. This is my green one. Now I can put boxes on all of these. And this is if you've been doing inline styling where uh, this is really handy because I'm going to select all my list items now and we can throw a border on all of these Maybe we'll do three pixels for this solid. Let's go with Dodger blue for this one because why not? There we go It's a nice blue that we have coming in and the re Again, the reason I'm doing that is to show us each one of these is its own independent box So we have the list and then we have these little boxes that are inside of it But you also notice we have some spacing on the side here where the bullets are falling into and where these numbers are falling into and that's kind of interesting. So what I'm actually going to do is if we come back here 
And if I come in, I'm gonna quickly add some paragraphs to this. I'll see you back in just one second. Okay, so a bit of a bigger update, but we have three paragraphs that I play. So I have a paragraph, then I have my list, I have another paragraph, my next list, and then my last paragraph down here at the bottom. Uh, and I've also made the text inside of these uh, ones at the bottom a little bit longer just to highlight something else that's gonna come up when it comes to styling these. And so what that is, is as I said, we can see that these blocks are full width, they're, they're going the full size, but you notice how here we have thing one, uh, and even though the text is really short, that box is going the full size here all the way to the end. And again, this is a block level element where it has all that space to live in, but it's not gonna escape out the side of its parent. So here, where I do have longer text now, when it gets to the end, it's gonna wrap down and it's just gonna have its normal wrapping text. This is exactly how you'd expect it to be, but I just wanna highlight these are block level elements. They're taking up the full size that is available to them. And it's also gonna help us when it comes to styling a specific thing. But the first thing I actually wanna talk about is the spacing that we have around the elements, sort of where these bullet points and other things are and also that there's some default spacing on the top and the bottom of them. And to be able to highlight this, what I'm gonna do is right click and I'm gonna choose inspect. You can do this in your browser too, whether you're, whatever browser you're in. Uh, and that's gonna either open a separate window like I have here, or it might be stuck to the side of yours. If you haven't used this, this is called our dev tools and it's one of the most useful things that you'll ever see. I guarantee you're gonna be using it all the time. It, it's a lifesaver. I, I grew up without it when I first started this. Uh, they didn't have these and it's really nice that we have them now but it's really fast if yours is you know if you want it in a separate window if i click on these three dots here uh, and i am in chrome this might be a little bit different to move them around in other browsers like i can dock it inside my window and have it so i can scroll up and down and this just stays here at the bottom uh, and you can zoom in on these so if you find the text is too big or too small on them just a control a plus or if you're on a Mac it would be a command plus and you can zoom in and make the font sizes bigger or smaller minus to make them smaller plus to make them bigger and the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to grab this guy here this weird little arrow thing and in the other browsers it looks similar I think Safari is like a little circle with a cross in it or an X in it, but you can go and highlight different things. And if I go and highlight my list here, I can actually see the different pieces of it. And I can do the same thing over here with this. This is my box model. So I can see my list items. I can see the, or I can see the content. Actually, this is my OL. So there's the content, the blue area. I can see my padding on the left there. I can see the border and that's what I put. And then I can see that there's a margin on the top and there's also a margin on the bottom here. Now, I never put this margin here. I never put that padding there. Uh, these are what, these are part of the browser defaults. And this is just how the browser is styling things. Just like we have numbers on this and we have these bullet points on this. We didn't put those there. We just chose that element and they showed up. So it's just part of the default styling. And this is where it can be really useful to use your dev tools because I can go, you know what? This space here is too big. I don't need it to line up exactly with my text, but maybe I don't want such a big space here. So I can see here, oh, that's coming from padding and there's only padding, there's no padding on the top, there's no padding on the right, none on the bottom, it's only on this left side. So that means I can go over to my CSS and let's choose that ordered list and we can say that the padding left and right now I can see that it's 40 pixels so if I want it half as big, I could set that to 20 pixels and it's gonna move over. And now I have that padding that's right there and we have to be careful with zero there is a reason that we have default padding and it's because if we do zero, it takes all that space away and the numbers are actually gonna hang off the edge of the page by default, which can be a little bit awkward. Now you might set things up a little bit different with the styling on the rest of your page and then you have these hanging numbers that can actually look kind of good, but uh, doing the zero on it as a default, if you're keeping it as like a regular list like this and not a navigation or something, uh, it is important to keep some space available. And of course, if you wanna go bigger, we can go bigger too. Uh, and make it as big as we want. And we can use other units as well. So one rem would be about 16 pixels. Maybe we'll do two uh, or 1.5 and we get the space however we want it. Of course, we wouldn't normally have these uh, boxes drawn around things. And we're just, we're gonna keep those on now for visualizing stuff, but we'll turn them off eventually as we get these to look a little bit better. Now, speaking of spacing, I said there's the default space on the top and the bottom. So we might wanna increase that space. So I could come here and just say like, let's double it 32 pixels and I doubled the space on the top and then I can do the same margin bottom 32 pixels and I can increase the space there. Now the one thing that can be a little bit frustrating is if I do a margin of zero there and I do a margin of zero there and I still have a space that I wanted to get rid of. 
And if I look here, I have no margins. Like I, let's highlight that entire thing again, where we can see the entire element. There's no margin top and bottom. The space is coming from the paragraphs that are around it. <laughs> so uh, this is sort of called, this is part of what we call collapsing margins, where before this, the margins were actually collapsing into each other. I don't want to get too far into that because I want to stay with lists in this video. Um, but just to say you can increase the padding or the margin really easily. But if you do have other elements around it, you might have to play with their margins as well. If you're trying to make the, uh, the spacing smaller, though most of the time you probably want to have some spacing on there. Getting a zero is a little bit, um, it's not often that you're going to do something like that. So let's take these and, you know, I'll leave these on here so we have something to look at. So maybe we'll go back up to 32 pixels for the two of them. Then that's most of the spacing. The only other one that I want to look at is sometimes we have the spacing between the elements that, you know, we want a little bit more room. And for this, actually, for now, let's turn off these colors that I have. And I'm doing a control forward slash to turn these into comments. If you're on a Mac, that would be a command forward slash. And by doing that, it just turns it into a comment. So I can turn it on and off just by pushing that, which makes my life really easy. Um, so I can sort of debug stuff or visualize things, turn off the borders. I'm always putting borders and backgrounds on things when I'm doing layouts in CSS or trying to figure things out just because it lets me visualize what's happening. Because when everything just has a white background, it doesn't really help me very much in understanding exactly what's going on. The last thing we're gonna do now for uh, when it comes to spacing around stuff, because we saw our padding, we saw the margin top and bottom, and it's this distance between the elements that we sometimes wanna have a little bit bigger. So on my list items here, one solution that I see people do that I will not recommend is to use a line height. And I would just wanna show why I wouldn't recommend it, because when we do it on a small list like this, it looks like it's working fab, it, just, it works. <laughs> um, and I see people do this not only on list items, but I see them use it on all sorts of things. And it's not the best idea because if you have more text, it breaks everything and it doesn't actually add spacing between the items. As we can see here now, I have tons of space uh, between each line, but the list items are just as far apart from each other. So it's only working if we have one line of text. That's not a great solution at any time because you might have a short list item that turns into a big list item and then it ruins everything. So if you've been using that or you've seen that trick used, don't do that. <laughs> um, instead of that, we wanna go on these because remember each list item is its own box. So that means just like we had our list where we could control the margin, top, bottom, padding, all of that, I can do the same thing on my list item. So here, let's actually, let's just go really, let's do the line height again, line height of two, just now that I have these borders on it, because you can see it's not increasing the distance between the items, it's adding some spacing inside of it instead. We don't wanna do that. We want the spacing on the outside of them. And if we want spacing on the outside, then we use margin. So I can just come in with a margin bottom of, let's go with 16 pixels, hit save, and now it's added that space on the outside of each one. And on this list, it's gonna look very similar to what we had before, but you can see on this list at the bottom, it works much better because now we have my list item, we have the space, my list item, my space. So if we turn off that, now we can see that we have, you know, it looks a little bit better. The items have somewhere to breathe. It's easier to see that it's three distinct points. So adding a little bit of margins on our list items can often make, you know, just ha help a little bit with clarity in, in being able to read something. So yeah, there we go. That's, I think, everything that I wanted to cover when it comes to spacing elements. Now, the next thing I wanna look at is changing the numbers or the bullet points. And there's a lot of different ways that we can actually do this. So the first thing is just changing the color of them. And there's some easy ways to do that. Uh, we can go on the list itself or on the list item. It's really up to you. I'm gonna do it on my OL. Let's just change the color here to orange red and hit save. And you can see that the text has changed and the list item here has changed as well. These numbers have changed. Now you might only wanna change that and not this. We're gonna see how we can do that in a second, but it is really important to know that by default, the color of them matches. Let's take the same color and put it on my UL right here. The color of the bullet point or the numbers or whatever is here will be by default the same as our text color. So that can make our life a little bit easier sometimes, but of course, sometimes we want them to be different colors. I'm gonna circle back around to that once we look at styling these up a little bit differently, but just really fast, I think it is important to know that they do match each other like that. Now, what I wanna do is look at some of the properties that open up that we only have for lists, because margin, padding, borders, we can use those on basically everything, whereas we have a few list-specific ones. So one of them is list style type. 
And list style type is a bit of an interesting one. I, I'm gonna make this a bit bigger just so we can see everything that I'm working on. We'll resize my browser here a little bit. And list style type, because it's a CSS property, there are some list style types that are for ordered lists and there's other list style types that are for unordered lists, but we just have one property for all of them. So one thing that we can do here is we can actually write none and it's gonna take them away. And that might seem really silly, but this is actually really common to do uh, for when it comes to making a list into a navigation. For example, we turn off the styling, remove our margins, remove our padding, and then probably use Flexbox to make it into a bit of a layout. Um, but if you're going to keep it as a regular list, I wouldn't suggest doing none since visually we lose them. Now the default here is actually called decimal like that. So if we have decimal, it's coming in with decimal numbers. That's the default. So you don't have to put this if you don't want it. Uh, you know, if you want to just keep things the same, you never have to change that. Uh, but just as an example, we also have like lower alpha, which will make it ABC instead of one, two, three. Uh, lower means yes, we do have an upper and then we have an ABC. So these are you know other ways that we can have ordered lists. Um, you might, you'll see upper alpha, you'll also see Latin. The Latin and the alpha, as far as I know, are exactly the same. Uh, so lower Latin will be exactly the same. Uh, there are other ones here as well though. We have the Greek, if you want the Greek letters coming in. We have Armenian. Um, you know, we have a whole bunch of choices. I'll leave a, a link to a list of all of them because there's too many to go through uh, right now, but let's just put this one back to decimal for now. So we have the default that's coming on that. Uh, and then over here, we have a list style type as well. And for this one, the list style type, the default is disk. So if I put disk, nothing actually changes. Uh, another one that you might think is the default is circle, um, which I misspelled, circle. Uh, there we go. And you can see they come in as circles instead of full disks. They're just the shape of a circle. Uh, we have square and we have a few other ones as well. We can see that those are coming in and we can change the style of that. Now, what you could do is you could come up here and actually say that my OL is a square and it will work because they're interchangeable because it's the same property and they're lists. But like I said at the beginning of the video, please never do this. We're making this look like an unordered list, but it is an ordered list and screen readers are gonna see it that way and Google's gonna see it that way and anything that has to look at the code because it can't see the screen is going to see it as an ordered list. So don't make an ordered list on ordered looking and vice versa because again, we could come in here and do that. Just because we can do something doesn't mean we should do something. So let's not do that. And you know what, let's just come in. I think we have Georgian as well. Is that, there we go. Just to have something a little bit different um, at the same time uh, for both of them, so, right? They've been styled a little differently. But these are using the default options we have for list style types. And sometimes you don't want something, not so much on the numbered lists there, it makes sense because it's counting something. So it's changing each one of them. But on our lists down here, like this, you know, a square, a circle, all of those things, it's a little bit boring, right? <laughs> so we actually have a couple of different choices that we can use for these. Uh, the first one is if you do have an image that you want to use, you can use list style image. And if you've ever done a background before, it's exactly the same way. I'm going to put a URL and then I have to do the path to my image. So in this case, my path is going to look like this, but we'll explore why in a second and mine is burgericon.svg. And you can see now these are little tiny hamburgers. Let me zoom in a lot on that so you can see it a little bit more clearly because I kept them really small. Uh, but it was, or I was, I was going to do this on the hamburger recipe before. That's why I have the, the burgers coming in here. But I have that little burger icon coming in because this is a small little burger icon that I have saved. And just in case you're not familiar with like pathing things like this, what we're doing is, if we look here, I'm in this CSS file right here, and the dot dot is to go step backwards. So we're inside the CSS folder. I want to escape outside of that to where all of these things are living. So now I'm in this main area, I'm in the root of my project, and I want to go over to my image folder. So IMG goes to my image folder, and then here I have my burger icon that is right here that I'm getting. Now you can put anything you want here. You can have any image whatsoever. <laughs> so let's just say for fun, you can see I have a background there. If I bring in my background.png, well, guess what? It's actually gonna work, but it's this really big image and it's sort of gonna break my entire layout, <laughs> right? Because this, this is the whole image and we see the entire thing there. Or I could come in with my logo, which is I think logo.png, uh, right? So I could put that and I have my logo there, but it's really big and it doesn't make any sense to be coming in with this huge thing like that. 
Uh, if you're going to do this with a custom image, I would really recommend that instead, you know, have something like the burger icon I have, you want something very small uh, that is going to work because if it is uh, too big, then it's just going to break everything. And I keep misspelling. There we go, I finally got it. Um, but yeah, it, make sure that your icon is small if you're going to use a list style image. Now there is another way that we can actually style these to make them look uh, different. So what I'm gonna do, is let's turn off that list style image. Uh, and I do this a lot for my unordered lists and it's something called a pseudo element. So I'm gonna do this on the allies and I don't wanna do it for these. Uh, I only want this on my on ordered lists. So I'm gonna say UL space LI and we'll, ex we'll explore why in a second. Uh, but this is choosing my list items that are inside of my UL only. So only list items in my on ordered list. And let's say the color is going to be red just so we can see these don't change, but these ones down here did change. So I've only selected this bottom group. So taking off that red background, what I don't actually wanna target the list items themselves. I'm gonna come on this list item, and I'm gonna do colon, colon, and this might look really weird, but it's colon, colon, marker. And marker is kind of new. If you're watching old tutorials on lists, you probably won't see this. Uh, this is When you have a colon, colon like this in CSS, this is called a pseudo element. And this is it's an element that's not really in the page. Like if I go and look in my HTML, I don't have those bullet points here anywhere but the browser is adding those bullet points in. So it's sort of like a, a pseudo element and not real element, but it is an element because it's in the page, but it's not in my HTML. So we have a pseudo element. The amount of styling we can do on marker is a little bit limited, but one thing we can do is I can change my color. And if I change my color here, it's only going to change the color of the bullet points. Cool, right? Uh, and I can actually, let's take off the UL because you can do the same thing with your numbered lists. And of course, let's maybe turn this off just so we have one, two, three. Uh, and you can see if you want to do that, you could definitely change it that way. Maybe you don't want it to be red, but you just want to change the color a little bit, a nice little subtle styling difference, and it can look really good. The reason I was selecting only the ones on my UL is because there's another thing that we can do in here, which is kind of fun, which is our content. And we can change the content to something else. And why this is fun is we're gonna put this inside of quotation marks. And for now, let's just write A, B, C. Just so we can see it is showing up. And I can't actually select it because it's a bullet point. Looks like A, B, C. Not really something I wanna use, but we have that coming in. Uh, and you know, of course we'd never do this, <laughs> but just to show you that it is possible. Uh, but where this can be fun is you can actually put emojis here. So uh, I'm gonna open up my emoji picker and let's put in the, I don't know, <laughs> face palm for some reason. I know every one of them gets the face palm on there. So, you know, if you have something, maybe it's confetti or, uh, you know, we have, you're celebrating something and each one's a little celebration or whatever it is. And you have an emoji that you want to use, super easy to be able to do that. Or as I showed you before, very easy to be able to change the color of it as well. Now, I did mention that there's very limited styling that we have available for marker. So we can do all of the font styling stuff that you might do. Uh, so we can come in here and change the font size of this. So let's just say it's, I don't know, 25 pixels to make it really big and it's bigger or make it five pixels and it gets really, really small and I can barely see it. The problem now is one of the limitations is, say we're like really close. Maybe if we take that off, it's, you know, maybe we want more space in between these. And if I come on this and I say that we have a margin on the right of 16 pixels, well, we can't do that because margin doesn't work on marker. So if we want to be able to add some space here, the way that we would do this is then I would go to my ULLI and you have a choice between margin and padding. Um, I always get it wrong. <laughs> I put margin first and it's not margin. It is padding that we need. So padding uh, on the left side, left, and let's just do 21 pixels. So we have something there and you can see I've added a big gap here. 21 is way too big from what I normally do. Um, just so you know, let's put our border back on here. Border, two pixels, solid. Uh, I think the Dodger blue look good, so let's put that one back on. And you'll see it's adding that padding here, <laughs> and so we're getting that space in between them. The marker is sort of like included in this borderland, so the padding is going before my border, and it's going before the marker I have here. Uh, if I came in and I did a margin left, and we'll do 21 pixels there as well, that's gonna move everything over. 
So it's, you know, even though if we look in our dev tools here and we highlight it and it looks like the uh, marker is living within this margin area that's being highlighted in orange, it's actually not really in that realm. It's sort of in the border realm. So it's padding first, then the border slash marker, and then our margin after. Um, so yeah, and anyway, it doesn't really matter. You try one of them. If it doesn't work, you try the other one. That's what I always suggest people do when they're trying to know if they should use margin or padding. It's, it's always one or the other for extra spacing. Um, so use the one that works well for you. And now there's one more thing that I want to talk about with lists and styling lists, and that has to do with alignment, because I see something that people like to do sometimes, uh, which is center alignment on stuff. And center alignment in general should be reserved for very few situations because it's a lot harder to read. Uh, but let's go on this ordered list, and we're going to do a text align of center on there. And notice how these numbers stay all the way out here and these move here uh, and it looks terrible. And we can actually fix that with a list style position and um, we can say inside. And that might be a, sound like a weird word, uh, but the default is outside. And remember when we did our padding and margin, we saw like the numbers, right? The, the number lists or the bullet points were sort of outside of the list. Now we're pulling them inside. So they move around with the list items themselves. And that's, it can work if you have these single ones like this, because let's say I come over here and I say, this is my thing three of three. It already gets kind of awkward looking. Uh, and then if we make this even, you know, let's come on our unordered lists and do a uh, text align, text align of center. And then, right, my bullet point is sitting all the way out here and this is becoming centered and it just gets really awkward and it wouldn't matter if it's inside or outside. So even though we can do a text align and then you can sort of fix things with this list style position, it never will fix it enough. It's always going to be kind of awkward and kind of weird. So unless like your boss is telling you to center align a list, please don't do it. And again, if you're watching this, I'm assuming you're pretty new to HTML in general and CSS and going through this, obviously we were looking at OL, LIs uh, and ULs. And you can see that I have a few other elements on here as well. And when you're first learning it, at first it can seem really simple, but as you're learning more and more, it, the list of elements can feel like it's just ballooning out of control and just more and more of them that you have to keep learning. Uh, and if you do feel a little bit overwhelmed by it or you don't know which ones you really need to know right now, I recently put out a video that explored the elements that are the most important to know early on in your journey. You can find that video right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would really like to thank my enablers of awesome, Andrew, Michael, Simon, Tim, and Johnny, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.